You good? I think we should run it one more time and start with the Mica 6 8 verse. The whole thing? My name is Brian Wallace. And my name is Ralph Lemp. And we serve together on the staff of Pittsburgh Presbytery. What you are watching now was actually recorded after we finished recording. Yes. Uh, so we, we recorded a conversation for you today about the importance of self-awareness mm -hmm. as part of living the Christian life yep. and living in Christian community. Yep. And we, and Ralph at the end explained really, why, really well why it was relevant. Yeah. And rather than bury the lead, yes. as Sheldon used to tell us, don't bury don't the lead. Bury the lead. We're going to talk you, so about I, that yeah. at the beginning, yeah. and then you're going to see a cut to our regular conversation. So you framed so well why self-awareness, this idea we're going to talk about in the main part, is so important for, for the Christian walk and in the Christian community. Yeah, so I just pulled a little bit of, of, of Micah 6-8, which is, you know, just a piece of that is, is, is to love Jesus, uh, love our neighbor, you know, do justice, love our neighbor, and walk humbly in our faith, right? Uh, that's the importance of self-awareness, because in that function, we allow ourselves for growth and understanding as a community of faith. We stifle, like we stifle that when we are when we are not self-aware. We we allow ourselves to be in the spaces where you know people may not want to even want to be. Sometimes, to, to be honest, you know, I've I've been in those communities of faith as well. So, I think. Um, to, to your question, B, I, I think that's the reason why this is important. Yeah. Why self being self aware is important. Would you Would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, I would just say that if you're going to if you're going to love your neighbor, mm. right? Part of loving your neighbor is understanding how you are being received. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And so, so much of self awareness is managing these crucial interpersonal relationships within the life of the church and within the life of our community, yeah. right? To be able to say, okay, how how am I being received? Yeah no matter what my intent, yeah. right? We've talked in other things about how intent is important, but it's not ultimate. Mm -hmm. That your intent almost doesn't matter if your impact if is your different. Your impact is different, right. that's right. And so understanding if there's a misalignment between your intent and the impact, and that's where the hard work of self-awareness comes in. Yeah. So I think it really falls under, and the Micah 6 eight was so good, humility is understanding oneself. Yeah. And just so you're aware, what you're about to see is a really just a authentic conversation between yeah. two friends, two, yeah. two brothers. If you use uh, the well-scripted YouTube things, there are no scripts in this room at all. There are no scripts in this room. But I, I think to the credit of all of you, we would never bring anything less than that, yeah. our authentic selves yeah. to you, because um, we want to be able to uh, um, just just bring that to you because uh, we love all of you. So, so with, without anything else being said, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this and it's beneficial for all enjoy, of you. Enjoy the conversation. So I am Reverend Ralph Lowe and I'm Reverend Brian Walls. And today we thought of in the 11th hour <laughs> to kind of talk about being self-aware, self-awareness in communities of faith and why it's important. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, B, when I used to work for a secular uh, world uh, um, uh, at a company that should not be named, there were a number of individuals who I would deem just didn't have that self-awareness in the within the community. Um, that I'll be honest with you, B, that was that affected their their leadership, their the ability for the community to to grow and and move toward a commonality and common goal. So um, so before we get all too deep in it, what what is self-awareness, B? So self-awareness in its simplest form is understanding how you are received, how other people experience you yeah. in your own traits and tendencies, yeah. right? And yeah. that includes the very positive things and the very negative things that can, that can come with it. And I think one of the things as it relates specifically is in any situation where you're talking about interpersonal relationships, mm -hmm. that's where self-awareness becomes more important. Yeah. And we're talking about communities of faith, churches. It's all about the interpersonal. It is. Right? So it is. So like you, before I made my decision to do a seminary, I worked in, I did an internship with a company, and we had guys who were blissfully lacking in self awareness, mm. but it didn't matter. We were working in IT. Their code worked. Right. 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 And so even though they were difficult to work with, they were combative. They were all these things. As long as they could do their job, it didn't matter as much. Right. right? It, it, sometimes it became too big of a deal. Yeah. 
but it wasn't as important as it is in communities of faith, as it relates to pastors and leaders and congregations, mm -hmm. where it's all the interpersonal. Right. That's right. I think that um, you know, and that 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 interpersonal, that self awareness allows, well, actually takes away from you know the relationship piece um, that really wasn't needed when you're giving the example um, for your your coworkers that you used to work with before. Um, and also, I, I think if you are neglecting yourself aware, it, it, it doesn't help in uh, conflict resolution. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, the ability to be in these situations, which we all have in our communities of faith, where I disagree or, you know, I am not in lockstep with someone else's opinion about whatever it may be, or something maybe more grander than that. Um, and if we are not self-aware about how we pr present ourselves in that conflict. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, in, in our main council work, we actually enter into these spaces a lot of All times, time. right? All right. the time. What do you, you have um, thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, so this relates to any kind of relationship, mm -hmm. right? And I think one of the things to understand is that, you know, when we talk about self-awareness, we talk about faith, some people are like, well, wait, as long as I know Jesus, it doesn't matter. Right. 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 And like, there is something, I don't want to say compelling, but there's something that's like kind of freeing. Of that. course. Being like, well, yeah, but we all love Jesus. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. But the thing is, is like, when we talk about self-awareness, part of what we're trying to understand is like, like as those created in God's image, mm -hmm. we are all unique. Yeah. Right. We're all unique. We all have different stories and experiences, but understanding how we're wired, yeah. right? Understanding how, Experiences in our lives have shaped us, how lived experiences yeah. across cultural differences, socioeconomic differences, all the categories, right? And so there's a tendency to just be like, yeah, but if we love Jesus, it's fine. <laughs> but that's just it, just, it just doesn't work. It does not work that it, way. It just doesn't work. And so when you talk about conflict, you know, I know you respond a certain way to conflict. Mm -hmm. I respond a certain way to conflict. It is not the same it's response. It's not the same response. Right? Right? It's, it's not, not the same, same response. response. Yeah. And yeah. so you and I have been in meetings and situations where you're reacting one way, I'm reacting another way, right? right? Yeah. And like understanding that at some points, like I know for me in managing conflict, being aware of my response, which is all conflict is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. My underlying belief <laughs> is all conflict is bad. Mine is not. And well, yours I see that as an opportunity to navigate and shine in that conflict. Right. You know, which brings me real quickly to a point is I think one of the things that helps me be self aware is uh, I understand the Enneagram. Some of you may know about that. And that's just one of the tools I use to be self-aware uh, of, of how I am in, in community. Um, and it, really in any space, not just communities of faith, any space. I really use that tool um, as an opportunity for me to be introspective um, of how I am in different situations, how I'm reacting to situ different worldly situations, um, to put it bluntly. Um, and I know that in a space where there's conflict, I view it differently than yeah. B as you articulated yeah. in that I see an opportunity to kind of take the reins and, okay, we're going to get along and I'm going to pull you along with me. I don't care if I have to do that or not. So, and that is not how no, not a lot, you right. do it. No. So if, if so I guess the point here is if we didn't know that those two things could collide in a way that's not constructive yeah. to the resolution that we are all attempting to get to. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is important. What are some things that we can do to be become more aware? Like so -aware? you made mention of one tool. There's a lot of tools, right? Some of you have heard of things like Myers-Briggs or Strengths Finders or DISC. There's a lot of these kind of personality assessments. And especially for those of, of us who are in kind of a professional world of managing interpersonal relationships, I think those tools can be really helpful. I think the thing that can be most helpful is Kind of being honest and open yeah. with those around us yeah. right? and saying you know how do you experience me yeah right and so one of the questions i thought would be kind of fun to ask of like like did each of us share what are three things that you've learned about yourself and i'll answer the same thing yeah that have been difficult oh. to accept because right? oh. the thing about self-awareness is that sometimes you like read something about yourself and you're like oh that's so true right like, that's so that's so what i want to be yeah right Mm -hmm. And so, like, one of the things for me that, that in every personality assessment I've ever done, they talk about how people of my type, no matter the, what the tool is, are easygoing, mm -hmm. right? I want to be known as easygoing. Mm -hmm. That is a value for me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. So some things, it's like, yes, yeah, see, I am easygoing. <laughs> but there's also other things that we learn. Yeah. And so 
I think in just honesty and transparency, what are the couple of those things for you? And then I'll answer the same thing. Yeah, so I, I can think a couple of them. The one of one of the things that was difficult for me, and I really learned this more before that before I got into ministry from my wife and me and, uh, and, and friends is, you know, this value I put on being right. <laughs> to be to be right and not not also to be right, to be to be acknowledged for the one who is right, who has come up with the right solution and or right uh, opportunity uh, to achieve. And, you know, it sounds really bad as I say it out loud. That can be a good thing. Okay. As a leader, sometimes you need someone to have a vision in order to make things happen. So I think I've, I, I've cultivated that in a way that it, it, at its worst, my wife would say at its worst, um, you know, I just would jump in and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and look at me while I do it because I'm, I'm going to shine and do it well. Um, on the other side of that, though, it offers an opportunity. If I'm being introspective, if I'm being self-aware, I have to, I would manage that, that uh, pull for me, that enticement for me to be like, okay, let me jump in and do this or pull this. Let me sit back. Let me listen, you know, because it's in that that I'm able to really ascertain what's needed in this space. So that can be, especially in communities of faith, because sometimes the best presence that leader can have is to be the non-anxious, to be the one that just sits and has a ministry of presence versus the ministry of, of anxious and, and, and um, giving all the answers is, is how I articulate that. What about you? That comes to you. I mean, so we kind of touched on it. Like, like for me, the default deep in my being is when conflict begins to emerge, make it really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And what I mostly want to do is withdraw. Mm -hmm. Or just simply figure out a way to help everyone get along. Yeah. Right. And where this works in my favor is in situations where I'm not directly involved mm -hmm. in the conflict. If I'm sitting with two parties who are fighting, I can often sit there mm -hmm. and like stay calm. I'm not directly involved. But if I'm directly involved, like my stomach gets tight, my face turns red, <laughs> right? Like, like it's just this. I'm laughing because I've seen. Oh yeah, it, right? you, yeah, seen you've it. seen it, right? Yeah. I'm just like, oh, but like understanding that sometimes navigating the way through conflict and leaning in mm -hmm. is the most productive thing to do, mm -hmm. right? And like just knowing that like, but accepting, but here's been the hard part, accepting that I will never be comfortable with it. Yeah. That's the thing is, it's like, okay, great. I want to become comfortable with conflict. It's like, okay. And I could say, I want to play in the NBA next year. Like both things are equally likely to happen. Right. 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 But understanding and recognizing that feeling and also understanding like this was one of the hard things was like, it was like, people have told me that, and they're like, you don't fight fair. Mm. What the heck does that mean, oh, right? Man. But what they but what they meant is that I would react sometimes so strongly and yeah. so definitively yeah. that there was no discussion. Yeah. It was like, well, what do you think of that? Is the dumbest, stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. I can't believe you would say that you say that a lot. What is wrong with you? But I would say it in this like calm, measured, like, yeah, I just don't right. And so that was really hard to just be like, okay, sometimes when the temperature in the room goes up, mm -hmm. You've got to lean into it. Yeah. And that, oh, man. I think the other one that was really hard, and I didn't actually, this was a really good learning for me, leaving a pastoral position, mm -hmm. was uh, was not wanting to deal with my own emotions around the leaving. Yeah. Right? Just realizing that, like, I was downplaying how other people were going to respond mm -hmm. because I didn't want to deal with my own feelings. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was brutally painful. So like, that took... We, we share in that, um, if, if those of you who are in the grand, we're on the three, he's a nine, so we have a triangle, in which if, if there's a connection there, if you want to look at it, look at it. But we share in that as well, which is my wife would say, you, you know, early on, especially, you know, it's, it's if you have no feelings, like, what, do, you, do you even care? Sometimes you would say, do you even care? And it wasn't that I didn't care, it's just that I just suppressed those things. And also tied to my personality trait is I didn't want to look bad. Like, I didn't want to have that visible emotion so that in some capacity, which is again, being self-aware now, that that somehow reflected poorly on me by my reaction to this emotion, positively or negatively, right? So, so I, I will say that in learning that, in understanding that, uh, it has really allowed me to just be a better pastor, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, if I feel myself trying to cut myself off from that emotion, I have to, I, I, why? Why am I doing that? Why do I feel like I need to cut that off? Um, if I'm in a situation where, you know, you know, we, you and I and, and Louise caught in situations where there is a lot of anxiety, a, little, a lot of tension, a lot of conflict. And it is so tempting, and you taught me this, it's so tempting to want to go in and say, well, 
this is what you need to do. Yep. But really, you need to be able to, first of all, gain trust. And you can't gain trust by going in and just telling people what to do. You need to be able to uh, buy in is the language we use. You need to get buy into a, a common solution that allows for everyone to be heard and understood so that we move forward to whatever is necessary. So those are the two I would say that come to mind for me yeah. the most. Be. Yeah. Um, but it used, you mentioned this earlier, you know, a really good thing for you to kind of navigate that is just to be open and honest and ask the question, you know, how, how am I being perceived or how, how am I coming across? Mm -hmm. But also receive that feedback oh, with grace. Yeah. Like you need to be able to receive that feedback and understand that this, you've asked for this feedback. Yep. Been, people are going to be honest and you yep. need to be able to receive that, right? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's easier said than done. Yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes it's not kind of painful, yeah. right? Like one of the things that I remember like a number of years ago, people said, Brian, you're so intimidating. Mm -hmm. And like, first of all, I didn't, I didn't understand what people meant. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first thing, right? Like I had to kind of unpack that. What do you mean intimidating? Because I said, I strive to be easygoing. Mm -hmm. How can you be easygoing and intimidating all at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that was really painful to unpack. Yeah. Of like, like, no, like, like sometimes you come on so strong, you're so direct, you're so forceful that even though you're not like loud and screaming, it doesn't matter. Like, like you're a big presence in the room. Like, no, I'm not. Mm. And this was, you know, this like internal tension. Yeah. Of, like, like just, it wasn't even traits. That's what we call a blind spot. Like I, just, I didn't even know. Yeah. And so when people were telling me these things, my first reaction was to discount it and be like, no, I don't, I, like, I don't think that's true. Yeah. Like, yeah. but, but over and over, like, I remember someone saying, right, you cast a long shadow. Oh. I was like, what do you mean? No, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Right. And so you have a, you have a, there's a moment there where you have to decide either you're going to react with openness mm -hmm. and say, okay, let me see what I can learn here in this situation. Because to be clear, not all feedback is equally valid. That's right. Right. Some <laughs> people are going to give you feedback. Yeah. And it's like, that's, you know, no, I mean, that, that's what you've got to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and like constant process. Yeah. But being able to say, okay, like, this is what people are telling me. Mm -hmm. And is there something here for me to learn? To wrap up, what's one way you think people can grow in self-awareness? Yeah, I, I do think it is in, in a culture who, where everything is so loud and everything's coming at you. Sometimes it's hard to really gauge, you know, where you fit in, how your voice is, how in, it goes along with how you're perceived as well. I think there's a real tension there. You know, I just think, in, especially in communities of faith, mm -hmm. um, when you, where we try to love Jesus, love our neighbor, and, and walk humbly in our faith, mm -hmm. right? Love, love Jesus, love our neighbor, and walk humbly. And I think walking humbly means this self-awareness. Mm -hmm. What I do, and what you ask for one thing, is just take a beat. Ask the ones who care about me most. Yes. Ask the ones who care about me most to say, hey, you know what, I intended this. Is this how it was perceived yep. in this conflict? I mentioned my wife earlier, Kelly is really good at saying, I know you meant to say it this way, or you meant this when you did this. Not only just her and I, but in, in community, she'll say, but I'm telling you, this is how you were perceived. That's really helpful. So one of the things B.I. would say is just talking to those who you really care about and you value their opinion at all. What, do you, what would you say? I think the other thing is that, you know, some of us really aren't good at pondering the recesses of our souls. Mm. Mm. And so there is, and, and this is just full transparency, on the desktop of my computer, I have a feelings chart. Mm. And sometimes, like, when I don't know, when I'm upset with something and I can't find words, mm. I have to dig in and say, okay, I'm pop as embarrassing as it is, right? So who's been in pastoral ministry for 18 years who deals with a lot of feelings should not need a feelings chart to understand, right? But I've learned. Yeah. And so I go through, I'm like, okay, here's the six emotions. And it's really interesting to be like, oh, wait, that's it. Mm -hmm. that's that's it and like so I think there is there definitely is a huge part of asking others I think there's also a very scary like okay let's yeah. let's look inward let's let's talk about let's look at ourselves and see like what's going on in us and yeah. that introspection is not necessarily come easily yeah I hope this has been a little helpful um you know one of the things that Brian and I talk a lot about is just you know what what we can bring to the presbytery you know in our conversations um, and this is just one of the topics of many uh, that you'll be receiving from us in the future. Thank you.